Hey everybody, it's Sharon here from Content Sparks, and welcome to the latest live stream for our launch of Business Planning Simplified. Now, first, what I want to just warn you about is my Wi-Fi, which I am plugged into, has been a little sketchy lately. So I'll keep an eye on my phone to see whether there's any issues. And basically, if I freeze, leave me a comment in the comments and let me know if things start to get um, a little bit crazy here, things start to freeze, I will end up just sort of stopping and recording this as a video instead. That's just the issues with going live. So drop me a comment that you can first hear me. I look okay, I'm moving around and everything sounds okay before I jump in. All right. And also another thing is uh, in the comments for me to be able to see your name, if you're watching this on Facebook, you need to actually approve uh, StreamYard. And the place to go for that is just StreamYard.com slash Facebook. Only takes a second. You can go give your permission for me to see your name and then come back here. So if you haven't watched on this before, that's something that you'll need to do for me to be able to see your name. So again, StreamYard.com slash Facebook. And I'll pop that up again if I see people who just say Facebook user. I've got a couple people so far who said, we can hear you and see you okay. Excellent. All right. So anytime you have a question, I've got a lot to cover today, lots of things to show you. Primarily, I went through this morning um, in ChatGPT a bunch of different things for ways to customize our latest course. And these are things that you can apply to any course. So I'm going to show you that as much as I can. You'll see the examples and then any questions you have, just pop them in. We have a hard stop in an hour. It's actually two minutes less than an hour at this point. Okay. And if you are looking for that new course, it's contentsparks.com slash simple business plan. All right. Got that? Okay. Let's continue on. All right, I am, I first want to just go through a few points about why it should be a simple business plan and who this course is for. Now, we've designed this course for small business owners and for people that are just, that they have a business, they're just starting. So it's not totally from scratch, but they're in the throes of needing some direction. And with people like this, and you will probably relate to it, you already have a ton on our plate being pulled in different directions. You hear the word business plan and you just want to run for the hills. You know, the last thing you need is one more thing that's going to take weeks and take up all your time and not be able to um, and not be able to actually do anything else. You know, you've got enough going on in your business that you don't need all this complexity of going into a fancy plan. And because things are constantly changing, any of those traditional business plans are going to be irrelevant tomorrow or the next week at the least. So you need to stay flexible and the simplicity of a simple business plan is going to help you stay flexible, help you to pivot when you need to. So those are the main reasons to keep it simple. But that doesn't mean it should be just fluff. It doesn't mean that you don't cover the same elements as a standard business plan. You just have to keep it very concise. And that's what the course goes through. So I will show my screen, share some of the high level stuff. I recorded a video on the sales page that goes through the materials themselves. So I don't need to go through that here. If you want to see actually inside the materials, then you can watch that. And I'll just show highlights here. I want to focus on customizing it, making your own, teaching it in a way that's unique. That's not the same as everybody else out there. It's not the same as your standard business planning course, but it still covers those key elements. So let me hop over to my screen now. 
and you'll see the sales page. Remember, you can ask me any questions, drop them into the comments. Nettie, I see you put in the URL. Thank you very much. Contentsparks.com slash biz plan. All right. So that is what you'll see. And again, for Facebook user, if you are seeing that in the comments, remember you need to go to streamyard.com slash Facebook for me to actually be able to see your name if you're watching this on Facebook. All right. It's just, it's kind of annoying, but it's privacy issues, right? You want that. All right. So I will go a little more slowly at this very beginning so that you can hop over, get that approval and come back. So this is what the course page looks like, the sales page for the new course. So I'll just go through this quickly. You can go through it at your own pace, watch the video on the page. Um, you'll see I played with some of the formatting of it based on some feedback from a copywriter. So I don't have the big header there, but you can always go to the home or shop pages. So there's a little overview. There's some background about what it is. You'll see the roadmap of the course. So this is, um, develop a snapshot of your business is one of the first things you'll do. And that's about doing the core essence. So this is why it's important to already have a business or have the, the outline of it, know the basics versus starting from scratch. So they do a little snapshot. I'll show you the template for that in a minute. Explore the business landscape. That's things like competition and some market trends and uh, risks and opportunities craft a preliminary marketing plan, high level, this isn't the place for details, identify, improve your operations. Again, very concise. So this is not a traditional business plan, which would go much more in depth than these. You're looking for concise things to take action on where you can optimize. Some financial stuff, this isn't the in-depth of our financial essentials, small business business financial essentials course. This is doing the projections so that you can do some quick budgeting. Metrics to evaluate your progress. That's the KPIs, key performance indicators, just picking a few and then writing an executive summary. So it might sound on the surface like a traditional business plan, but I'll show you how we keep it concise. This course took a while to create because we had to make it simple. Uh, you'll see there's a video on the page. So if you want to see the actual materials in more depth, I went through those in this video. So you don't need to do that in the live stream. And then there's a little bit more in terms of module overviews, which I also walked through a bit in that video so that we could focus on customization things here. And there's also, you know, you can walk through snapshots of the materials here on this slideshow, which we created in Canva. So you can flip through that at your leisure with tabs for each thing. So you can see a list of all the materials you'll get as well. And there's a little bonus in this one that comes with it. That is key sections and terms, um, different terms and tips about business planning. So for people that aren't familiar with that. All right. Now. Let's go into the fun stuff. Let's hop into my folder and I'm going to show you in the student materials. There is a bunch of different stuff here. I'm going to go into the action guide folder first. And I want to show you the simple business plan template. So this is what students will come away with in the course. So You'll see it is 19 pages, I think. So that sounds long, but the first two pages are the executive summary. So that's where people will just put in those high level details after they've been through the rest of the course. So the rest of it is a business snapshot. So simple stuff around history market served. You'll see there's not a ton of room because you want people to keep it nice and concise. Products and services, we're focusing primarily here on businesses that just have one product or one service. So if you 
are working with someone who has a more complicated business, you'll need to go a little more in depth here and customize things. Ideally, it's someone that has a core product, core service packages that they can outline and work on and focus on, or at least focus on one thing, one core product. If they have some sales results, growth potential, they should fill that in as well. Just some basics looking back at the history. And then a little short market analysis. They fill in something about their three main competitors, a real high synopsis of their mark of their target audience, some information on market opportunities, unmet needs, sales data uh, that shows some insights like in past successes, what's been doing well in the past, how they can differentiate themselves. So nice, just two pages there actually three, because you look at the market trends a bit, um, opportunities, hurdles, and risks. And I'll show you what this can look like filled in. And this is where I use ChatGPT to create an example for a specific audience. So I'll show you that a little bit later and the trick for doing that. Marketing plan, again, high level. So the whole point of something like a simple business plan is to be able to just quickly look at it and say, oh yeah, this is what we're focusing on. This is what I need to focus on. If you need to create a much more detailed marketing plan, going into depth on action steps and uh, different tactics and strategies, that's something separate. This is where you want to keep it concise and, and look back and say, oh, these are my three marketing goals. These are the tactics I'm doing. Let's stay focused on that. Don't get distracted by every other thing out there, every shiny object and every strategy and what everyone else is doing. These are the things stay focused. It's only if you're needing to pivot that you'd go back to it and say, okay, I need to change this a bit because the market's changed. And then operations is something you want to look at too. We broke it down as product service. So that's, these are all the things that really affect quality, customer support, your costs. It's where you can quickly see where you need to streamline things streamline things and the resources you need. So delivery, if that's something, you know, how do you actually deliver your products, support, customer support systems, look at the resources, what you're going to track. It might just be one thing. So remember, based on whatever businesses you're working with, this may be simpler or more complex. Financial plan, don't get into an in-depth financial planning here unless your student, your client's businesses need it. We do, like I said, have a separate course on that for people that are new. The idea here is to do some estimates and there's a spreadsheet that I gave a high level look at in that video on the sales page, but um, they can feed that data into here or just do some estimates depending on what information they have. So you can guide them through. And I highly suggest you do this for yourself as well. And then the final thing in the high level or simple business plan is always tracking. So you have to track and measure anything you do or you don't know whether it's being successful. And that's something so many people don't do because either they don't know where the data is or they it's just more work. So get them to focus on at least three key performance indicators, three things. Remember why it's critical and be tracking them. And then at the end of the course, in the very last module, they're going to go back and do that executive summary at the beginning. So that using the simple business plan template is kind of your high level view. Like I said, I'm not going to go into all the materials, but I just want to show you there is an action guide. There's the spreadsheet I was talking about, which is there if you need it. There's all your usual student materials, course book, cheat sheet, all that fun stuff. You'll get your slides and your notes, speaking notes. You'll get your little funnel with a lead magnet and different things. And again, their sales page has a video overview of that, and there's that extra key term. So let me just hop right back over now to my screen, and I will start showing you customization options. So when you are customizing any of our courses, there are a few things you want to focus on. 
obviously there's name and title, there's examples, there's language, there's uh, stories you might want to put in, resources to add. And this is where you can use something like ChatGPT. I prefer ChatGPT just because it's very flexible. It doesn't have the constraints of a lot of other tools. Um, ChatGPT4, the paid one, is the most um, gives gives the best results. It's the most versatile from what my experience has been so far. I haven't had a lot of luck with others. And the paid version has this feature called Code Interpreter that I just started playing with. Um, I think it's only with the paid version. With both paid and free now, you also have custom instructions. So you can give it some background information on you, your business, how you want it to respond that will help you get much better results. And Code Interpreter allows you to upload something. So you can upload something like the course book or a section or the template and ask it for different ideas for things. Just make sure you look at it carefully, you edit it because you will not get output that you necessarily want to copy and paste though it's getting better and better. The nice thing with our courses is you have something to work with. You're not starting from scratch. If you're starting one of these courses from scratch, trust me, it, is, it doesn't save you time. You might get some ideas, but it's a whole long process that takes just as long really as doing it from, from scratch without any help. It just gives some guidance. So I'm going to go through, I'm not going to do it actually live typing the prompts because there's so much that I did, but it, it took me about, I'd say an hour and a half or so this morning to go through all the stuff I'm going to show you, which is why I'm not doing it live, but also the internet. So I started out giving it a little bit of background. I said, I need help customizing a course on business planning for a new audience. Now, remember, you, you can treat it as if you're just speaking to someone who needs a lot of specificity. So if you're not sure, you, you can't let it guess what you're thinking or it will go off on, a, on some tangent. And actually, let me go back for a second. I talked about those custom instructions. So this is some background that you can do. So when you type, when you hit your name on there, you can open up custom instructions. It gives you some ideas for things that you can put in. I put in who I am for background, who my audience is, who my customers are, who my customers work with. I gave it some, some uh, ways to respond, like use a mix of short and long sentences. Um, that, what did I say? Use a mix of short and long sentences to maintain an easy flow that could also be spoken out loud because I want it to be natural. Vary adjectives and adverbs to maintain interest. Um, for my marketing material, uh, for any course material that we sell, use language and examples that resonate with a variety of small business owners. And the other thing I did here, which is a little different, I said, confirm you understand any longer request before proceeding, because I don't want it to just go off and then I have to tell it to revise things again. So I wanted it to confirm. You may be asked to remember content before proceeding. So all these things I want it to know so that I don't have to repeat it each time. That's the beauty of the custom instructions. And then how would you like ChatGPT to respond? Respond in the style and tone specified in instructions. Response lang length should, be, should vary based on the requests. For requests that require a longer response, provide an initial outline to confirm. That's been really helpful, giving that, asking it for that initial outline, because then I can confirm that it's got it right, maybe tweak a few things before it starts doing more. Uh, then provide the content in sections, confirming you're on the right track after each section. You may give suggestions in places where there's no clear answer, and I will then tell you how to proceed. So I'm really trying to give it more guidance on how to respond so that I don't have to, it doesn't go off on tangents or start hallucinating and making things up. I can correct it and say, no, that's wrong. It doesn't always work, but 
it helps. Um, you may address me as Sharon. I just prefer that. You may offer opinions when I ask you to. That was something that actually ChatGPT suggested. Uh, use the following as the default personal style guide for any content that I'm going to be writing for myself, such as sales page copy, which also doesn't always work. But I had something I used that gave me an analysis of my tone based on my writing sample. So I plugged it into this tool and it came out with different tones and styles. So I have things like professional and confident with a hint of humor. That's my tone that came out. Vocabulary, clear, concise language that's easy to understand. Sentence structure. Uh, generally use a variety of structure, often written in conversational and formal style. Grammar. Pay careful attention to grammar and punctuation. Yes, please. Point of view, write mostly from the first person point of view, occasionally shifting into second. So I want it to be I, I, I when I'm speaking, like writing an email or, or something like that, or you. And look, I have a typo, but it, it noticed it. Um, humor, subtle humorous remarks to engage the reader. Voice, I said clear and confident with a friendly approach. These are all my style, and I had to analyze it from writing that I've done. Um, audience, compassionate and supportive, providing valuable information to the reader, content type, primarily informational and instructional content. So again, I gave it lots of examples and it told me that that was the type of content that I traditionally create, which is true, it's mostly informational or instructional. Research, uh, my analysis thing said draw from accredited sources to ensure accuracy. It's not going to be accurate. So I don't know why it told me that term, but I put it in here anyway, because I'm assuming at some point it will be connected to the web again. And there are plugins where you can let it look at links on the web, but it's, it's kind of sketchy there. Always check. And emotional appeal, I said, write with an open, direct, and honest tone, which creates a strong emotional appeal. That, again, is my style. So I put all of that right into the custom instructions so that anything that comes out should sound like me. And this is really helpful, and it's enabled for new chat. So definitely give a go. If you're using ChatGPT, try and put that in. I'm sure other tools that are out there for AI give you that kind of option as well. Um, a lot of them are tied into chat GPT, so that's why they give you that option, but then they limit how many words you can put out. So that's why I'm using this. So let's go back. And the first thing I talked about was the title. So I gave it a little background and I told it what audience I wanted it customized to. Now for this one, I said the audience is local small business owners who are building contractors, including plumbers, electricians, carpenters, and landscapers. If you have more, you would list even more. So obviously this is different from whoever your audience is and you would need to put it in in order to do this process that I'm gonna go through. Um, I gave it some context that I will give you different course content to revise one part at a time. Remember and confirm you have this background before I give you the first materials to revise. So this is really helpful. Give it the background, make sure it has the audience and make sure it confirms that it has it. So I said, certainly Sharon, <laughs> I'm here to help you customize the course, yada, yada, yada. Please provide the first part of the course. So it will guide you through. And whenever you're not sure, you can ask it, okay, what information do you need for to do X, Y, Z? So I said, Titles. First, provide 10 ideas for new titles and subtitles for the course that will resonate with my target audience, which I gave it. Current title is Business Planning Simplified. The current subtitle is Craft Your Roadmap from Vision to Execution. So I was very careful to say, this is the title, this is the subtitle. Because otherwise, if you just say, here's the title sub and subtitle, and you don't specify which is which, it will get confused easily. And it gave me a whole bunch that I can work from. Some of them are good, some of them are terrible, some are only so-so. And they all tie in with the target audience. So it's using some sort of words like constructing success from the ground up, plumbing the depth of business success, <laughs> the landscaper's growth blueprint, 
the electrician's roadmap to success. You know, some of these are really cheesy, but they'll give you some ideas. So I would, I might have it refine that. You can always do follow-ups, but for this demo, I wanted you to see different things. So now I wanted to get some examples. I said, great, let's move on to some examples I can put in different sections of the course. The first is a brief summary of the history of a business. So if I open up the course book, I'll show you where I pulled this from. And Okay, it's coming. Give it a second with my Wi-Fi. All right, so this is the course book. It's pretty long. So what I wanna do is look for examples that I wanna change. So I would go into um, home. I think this is maybe gonna be too slow for me to demo here, but you would go into home and then find over on the right. And in the navigation, I think you can just see, I type in example. And it will find all the different places where example is mentioned. So then you can go through and see what you might want to change. So for instance, the examples in here are around this hypothetical financial coaching business. So not really relevant to those local business contractors. So I want to put in something different. So what I did is I copied that section so it knows what the example is about. And then I went back into chat GPT and I said, replace the example in the text with a hypothetical one for a type of plumbing business. So you have to do a little thinking here. Think about what type of business. You could just say, you know, something that my audience will resonate with. And it came, I copied that and pasted that all in. And then I it came up with an answer. So it gave it repeated the history part, the exact same text, because that's not what I asked it to change. So it left it. And it gave an example that's about the same length. Pipes and Prosperity was established in 2023. So I'd probably ask it to come up with a different name. Um, by John Smith, change that too. A seasoned plumber with a desire to bring quality and affordable plumbing services to local homeowners and small businesses. Having spent over 15 years as a journeyman plumber, again, you might change that, but it's giving you some background that you could use as a nice example and maybe just tweak a few things here and there for that particular history. So it's not gonna, it's not going to require a ton of time for you to come up with something out of the blue. So I said, okay, you know, leave that. I might tweak it a bit more. Say so now let's move on to a worksheet. So you might go through the whole course book and figure out some different places you want to do some some different examples and continue that chat but I'm gonna move on and show you a worksheet. So let's move on to a worksheet that needs an example. I'll give you a blank, the blank worksheet contents that are not filled in. Provide an example of answers that our fictitious plumbing business might use. So then I went to my action guide and let's go into that. Open it up. And hope it doesn't take too long. It's just opening it up. Okay. So in the action guide, it's actually kept that navigation pane open. But I went through and I looked for something where I'd like to put in an example. And I think I used what's your vision. So I copied this. You don't have to worry about formatting and table entry. It'll figure that out if you just put all the questions in. And then I went back to chat GPT. Let's get back there. Sorry, it's so slow. And I put all that in. I just pasted it in. And here's the, I said, here's the provide example answers, right? Here's the worksheet directions and questions to answer. And I pasted it in. What's your vision? I didn't do anything else other than copy and paste. And it came up with examples. So this is another thing that you can do for customizing is actually give people 
an example of a filled in worksheet. And if you follow through with the same hypothetical situation, the hypothetical company in this case, throughout, you will get something that makes sense and people can actually follow all the way through. So base it on whatever business you are working with. So it came in, you know, what are your long-term aspirations for your business is one of the questions on the worksheet. And the hypothetical answer is to become the go-to plumbing service in our community, known for our quality, integrity, and commitment to customer satisfaction. So this is sounding much more realistic. What impact do you want your business to have? We want to redefine the plumbing experience by providing reliable, transparent, and affordable services. So this is where I find um, ChatGPT is helpful for you if you're doing a hypothetical example. Real world, you can forget about. Don't even don't even go there. You want some hypotheticals that will work, and it's very good at pulling that up. Um, which values and principles drive your business, integrity, quality, customer satisfaction, environmental stewardship, and community engagement. The environmental is actually kind of interesting. So there's some different things in here that we go through, and then it gives a short vision statement that pulls it together. We aspire to be more than just plumbers. We aim to be community partners, committed to quality, integrity, and environmental stewardship. I would pick a different word than stewardship. Through our dedicated service, responsible practices, we we strive to make a lasting impact one pipe at a time. That's kind of cool, actually. So that was the example. Make changes where you want it. Next part. How are we doing on time? Okay, let me move a little faster. Uh, I said, that sounds great. Now read reword the following introduction to the course so it is more motivating, resonates more with my new target audience for the course. Use a confident, friendly tone, incorporate relevant examples where it will help motivate the student to dive into the course. So I'm being really specific about how I want to revise it. And then I went and I copied one whole section from the course book in the introduction, which is a little background. Why do you need a business plan? And I just took those like three paragraphs because you don't need to go crazy on this sort of thing. You just want to make sure that you're immediately resonating with your target audience. And it did come back with kind of an interesting new introduction that I could play with a bit. And it addresses the target audience right away. So and it uses a lot of the language that this sort of target audience would use um, as a dedicated building contractor, be it plumbing, electrical work, carpenter, or landscaping, you know the value of a strong foundation. You know, it's trying to weave in some metaphors and other language, visual stuff that someone would, in, would like. So be careful of that because it will go overboard sometimes. So your hands have crafted homes, offices, landscapes, turning raw materials into functional and beautiful spaces. Now it's time to apply that same craftsmanship to the blueprint of your business. So it weaves that in there and you've got something to work with again that's that's more interesting and more targeted to your audience. So it gives the gives a revision of the strategic tool belt and all the different reasons. So there's a new introduction you can use and tweak. And I said, okay, that's much better. Now I need you to add more detail to a section of the course that isn't clear enough. Rewrite the following section, which discusses ways to mitigate risks, to add more detail and explain it as if the student is someone brand new to business who has no experience with this topic. This is another little tip that's gonna help you with customizing any of the courses where you might say, okay, my customer, my student isn't going to understand this. It needs to have more. So you can have it give you ideas for more detail. Um, I copied in this one section that is from the, I believe it's from the market landscape part where they do some research and look at risks and ways to mitigate risk. So I copied in that section that had stuff on risk transfer, risk mitigation. You know, somebody new might really, might not understand it. So it gave some clearer, simpler explanations that someone newer would understand. So um, things like risk transfer, think of this like wearing safety gear. You're transferring, 
transferring some of the potential harm away from yourself and business. This can mean getting insurance to protect against accidents or outsourcing certain tasks to specialists. So again, this is keeping in mind your audience and that target audience of building contractors, plumbers, electricians. So it's use that throughout to make it clear and resonate with your target audience without you having to just come up with stuff out of the blue. So that's another way, getting it to explain it, things differently. Now I said um, I wanted another great way to customize something is to pull in your own personal anecdotes and insights. And that's something I always tell you to do. But sometimes, again, you have trouble thinking, of OK, what kind of personal anecdote can I use here? So you can ask it. I said for the entire course on creating a simple business plan, what are 20 types of personal anecdotes that I could share to make sure the course resonates with students? Here's the entire outline of the course. So I went into the course contents list, which is in your instructor materials, and it's a PDF. Let me see if I can open it. So you'll be able to open this up and just, you know, highlight everything and then go back to here and copy it and paste it in. So you're giving it the full outline and asking it for 20 ideas. Sometimes it helps to ask for a number. And we've got a whole bunch of answers. It categorized them and gave me ideas. So share a story about how you discovered the specific areas of business you're passionate about. Finding your niche is not actually something that's in the course. So this is where it's kind of came up. It kind of came up with something that isn't even in there. So be careful of that. Um, vision creation, you know, examples there that you could do. Uh, what else is helpful? So go through this. You can ask it for more ideas. Say, you know, finding your niche is not in the course. This this is what's in the course. Can you give me examples for that? T correct it. It's not going to get offended. So you can just correct it when it's wrong. Um, capitalizing on opportunities. Share a success story where identifying a market opportunity led to, led to business expansion for yourself. So these are all things that are going to help you make this course unique to you. To, and nobody else has that same experience and the same anecdotes. So you're sharing the basic stuff you're taking from the course and then adding your personality and your experience to it. So this will give you ideas for that as well. And then you take it from there. Uh, another thing you can do is guest speakers so you to customize the course. So you can ask, what types of guest speakers could I invite to deliver additional sessions in the course that would add value? And for each module, I didn't tell it to go through each module, but that's the way it had set it up before. Um, and here it actually came up with some good ideas, some less than others, but it gives you some ideas like inviting a local successful entrepreneur who can inspire students. So if you have a clientele that includes similar students, that's a great thing. People can come in and showcase that and be kind of a mentor, um, branding expert, maybe not. What else have they got in here? Industry thought leader, digital marketing specialist. Some of these things I wouldn't do because you don't want to get into that kind of detail. Um, techniques for selling products and services. But the whole point here is to give you examples, not to tell you exactly what to do, but to get your thinking going and get give you ideas for what you can do customer service, financial planner. So, you know, something like the financials, you may not want to go into that yourself because it's not something you're particularly a specialist in. So that's where you could bring in a guest speaker, a local, and you can form partnerships with people like this, a local accountant who works with these sorts of businesses. So you can be working on the business plan and bring in someone who can deliver more on that section or even a lawyer because you don't want to cover that if you're not a legal expert. And actually, that's one of the suggestions, a legal expert. And it even gave a bonus idea of an environmental sustainability expert. That's a great idea. So anyone who's doing contracting who does, isn't 
doesn't know a lot about the environmental side, even if they should, you can bring in somebody on that. And that is really important to a lot of local people who would be using these contractors. So that's another great thing. So moving on, you can obviously ask for more ideas. I want you to get additional resources. I told it what resources I already have, an action guide, a business plan template, um, projection spreadsheet. What are 10 ideas for more? And it gave me some different things, some of which actually we do provide. So, but some, not so much. So a video tutorial, you could do a vid video tutorial on something like the financial projection spreadsheet add that in to explain it. Um, checklists and cheat sheets, we actually give you that. Networking opportunities. So yeah, you could create a platform where they could network. The expert interviews that already said. Quizzes and assessments, we do give you that. A resource directory, webinars. These are all interesting ideas, things you could do. Personal development resources, they're okay. I would probably go in and ask for maybe 10 more. What other courses could I create that would complement this one? So this is another thing you can do, which is start thinking about bonuses or upsells or courses that you would follow on with. So it's given a bunch of different things. Some of these we do have, and you could customize them. Marketing mastery for contractors. So you could do... Actually, we're coming, we're coming out with a local marketing tactics course later in the year. So that would be something you could use. Financial management. So you could do something like our small business um, finance course. Leadership and team building in trades. I don't know how, how relevant that is. You'd have to decide. Again, you have to know your audience yourself, even though you're giving it some background. Sales skills for service providers. That's a good one. Uh, sustainable building practices. Customer service excellence. We actually have a course called that. Legal essentials. Again, unless you're a lawyer, you wouldn't do that. So again, it's just coming up with ideas. Project management, starting a contracting business. Some of these will work well, some not. It's ideas. And then I said, and this didn't work quite as well. Um, I wanted it to put together a flow for a bunch of courses that I already have. So I, I gave it the names of the courses or the topics and say, okay, what would be a logical flow? And it came up with a flow that is not so great, not really what I would do. And here's where you know, your judgment comes in of your audience and the gaps and what's going to appeal to them. So it's some ideas, but this just shows that it's your judgment that makes the difference in here in using something like ChatGPT. It's not going to be able to answer that question well. Uh, what else? Oh, here's an interesting one. So I don't know if she's here. Misty. Yes, Misty, you are here. Okay, I can see in the comments. So Misty had asked me about how this could work with something like Asana. So I asked it. I said, for a business plan course, how could I lay that out in Asana so that people can use it as an alternate way of doing the, their business plan? Now, it knows what Asana is, luckily, because it has been fed all sorts of data and Asana has been around a long time. If you ask it about something from a few weeks ago, it's not going to know, and it might just make something up, but luckily it knew. So it came up with something, and it came up with, here, let me come back here, a step-by-step -step of what you can do and what you can tell people to do in Asana. So you could set, actually, this is for you to set up in Asana for your students. So you'd create a project, you'd set up sections for each module, you'd use those sections because in Asana you can do a project and then you can do sections and then you have tasks within those sections. So they're saying do it with lessons and activities for the tasks and then subtasks for the detailed steps that they have to do. So I use Asana as well for my project management when we're creating courses and we have it in 
phases. So each section is a phase like design, develop, um, package or and promote. I can't even remember, but we have tasks in each one and then subtasks so that we don't miss anything. That's a key for quality control. But you can set up a course like this because there are tasks involved in the same way in Asana. But I wasn't quite sure how to start. I just needed something as a starting point. So it gave me an idea. And then I would take it from there again. And even suggested some relevant resources, due dates. So that's an idea. If you have a timeline for the course, say you're delivering it live, you could have specific due dates so that students going through could see when their work is due on each part. Custom fields. Um, I, I don't think that's in, that's in the free Asana. I'm not sure collaboration, all these different things you could do as well. Obviously, you need to know the tool. And then I said, here's another customization option. So I said you can use this as a course, you can use it as a group coaching, but you can also use it as a one-to-one -one tool. So if you work individually with clients and are helping them create their course. So I said, okay, how could I use it? How would I adjust it to use it with a client? And it told me, so personalized assessments, an in-depth assessment to understand your client's specific needs, goals, challenge, industry, tailor the course to them. So that's something that we didn't include, but you could get ChatGPT to help you create it. I would follow this up with, okay, what should I put into that personalized assessment? What should I be asking? What are 10 questions to ask? What categories should I cover? That kind of thing. So it'll give you that idea, customize the modules, interactive activities, uh, feedback and check-ins. Yes, you'd need to do that regularly with your client, collaborative tools. So it remembered that I'd said Asana, so if using Asana or similar platforms set up shared access for both you and your client to collaborate, track progress and communicate in real time. So that's a great idea if you're working one-to-one. -one. And they're trusting you as it is with their to guide them. So collaborating on a project platform is really helpful. Resources, flexibility and pacing. So that's good too. One to one, you want to be able to have some flexibility because everyone's going to work at a different pace, a different pace. Real business scenarios, participation. Some of these things work, some don't. Personalized action plan all that stuff. So those were some good ideas. Uh, I also asked it for idea for a video. So I said, assume I'll be recording each lesson in the course on video, right? A script for a short two minute welcome video that welcomes new students to the course and motivates them to get started. So it did give me one. Um, here's where it didn't really give me language that I would use. But whenever I've tried to do a video script like this, I always end up just looking at it, looking at the flow and then saying, OK, I'm going to do it in my own voice. But it gives gives you ideas, some of which are a little bit cheesy, some are better. It says, you know, your trade inside and out, but building a thriving, sustainable business might feel like constructing a skyscraper without a blueprint. That's where this course comes in. So it's not bad. All right. So it gives you, again, ideas for a little welcome video because you want people to really dive into your course. And more than ever, when you do any of these courses, you need to get on camera. That is absolutely critical. People are trying to come up with these avatars and fake their voice or use someone else's voices uh, with these these shoddily put together courses that are whipped up. You need to get on camera. The rest doesn't necessarily have to be on camera, but at least in the beginning, preferably a little in, in the beginning of each video and just welcome people. Say, okay, we're now in module one, lesson one. Here's what we're going to cover. Here's what you're going to get out of it. Okay, let's dive in. And then you can switch off the camera because I know a lot of people are not comfortable on camera. But the more you do it, the more comfortable you're going to get. And you can get some tips for this. So let us move on. What else did I have it do? 
ideas for making some quick sales. This was kind of the standard stuff. So you can ask it for help in coming up with tactics and ideas for selling your course. And I asked it specifically for getting quick enrollments. So it gave me a bunch of stuff. It's just the typical stuff you're going to see, leveraging existing clients, social media, all that stuff. You've heard it all before. And we have it in blog posts and stuff. So I don't see anything particularly interesting here that it came up with. And I could ask it to elaborate as well. You know, some of it is tailored more for this audience, like customized outreach was not something. What else? Local outreach is something that's specific to this audience. Connect with local trade schools, chambers of commerce. So you can go through and see ideas that would that would work for your audience or for you rather, because you're the one selling it. And I wasn't crazy about it. So I said, what are 10 more creative ways if I don't already have a client list or email list? So it came up with some other things you can do. Remember, if you don't already have a client list or email list, it will take you longer to make sales of your course. That's just a given, which is why you should always be, be building an audience and building a list, building an email list, because that's how you can just set up a course and immediately make some sales as you keep building your audience. So it it added some other things. Scholarships or contests is kind of interesting because if you can do a few free ones, you might get more. But for visibility, you're going to need to do other things. So that's where things like the collaborate with local businesses could work well. Getting podcast appearances, you know, you have to do some outreach for these sorts of things to get visible. Um, community engagement. So doing some local groups could work because remember, we're talking local contractors. Street marketing, didn't think of that, but might be might work, you know, your audience. And I did ask where my audience is most likely to be on social media. And it gave some ideas. You know your audience better, but it did give some ideas. Twitter, Pinterest, and it said the types of people like um, Instagram, for those who take pride in their visual work, it can be a good place. So it's telling you what subsets. Um, Pinterest, if they are more designed focused trades. So they might be on Pinterest and you'd have to look. And it gave a few extra tips for engagement. Now comes the interesting part, which I want you to show you in this before we run out of time. And this is where I used code interpreter this newish feature that I think is only on the paid chat GPT plus. And remember code interpreter, you can upload things. It sounds like it's going to be something for coding, but you can do it with text. And I actually only just tried this this morning. <laughs> I said, great. Now I'm going to upload the entire course book for my business planning course, read it and identify the best places for me to add my personal insights and stories. So I, this is a big task. It's a long course book because there's so much involved. But you get a little, you can kind of see the bottom here. There's a little plus that says upload file. When you first open up a chat, there'll be a thing at the top, um, a, a drop down under chat GPT-4 where you can pick code interpreter. You don't, you can pick plugins, you can pick code interpreter, you can do default. So I uploaded it. And it said, thank you for providing the course book, Sharon. I'll begin by reading through the document to understand the content and structure. Then I'll identify the best places where you can add your personal insights and stories. Now, remember, in my custom instructions, I, do, I did say, confirm that you got it. Tell me first what you're going to do if it's something long. So it did that. And then it even came back and said, OK, the initial part is mostly headings and empty lines because that's the table of contents. I'll continue to analyze. So it told me that it's continuing to work, allow me some time. And then it said, okay, I'm done. And I suggest the following areas where your personal insights and stories will be most impactful. And it went through each section and gave ideas. So things like um, where you have to give your little business history, share your experience identifying the core of a business kind of obvious. 
Um, it went through lesson, it grouped modules two through four all together and said, before each lesson or after each key concept, share relevant personal experiences, mistakes, and lessons learned related to each. Okay, these are all kind of obvious, but they're also a good reminder. Um, finances, this is always a tough module for people. So it said, share your insights throughout the module into handling finances, estimating revenue and expenses, and any real world experience that shaped your financial planning. That's all right. But it'll. the whole point is it gives you some ideas success stories and different things to get your your thinking going. But then I wanted to actually get a template. So here's where I think I mentioned before that I wanted an example of the entire business plan template. And if you've been using that fictitious example of the plumbing business that ChatGPT gave us from the beginning, you'll be able to just refer back to that and say, okay, here's the business plan template. Give me an example for each section, which is what I did. I said, based on the contents of the course book, because remember it has the course book and it can see the explanation of each section. Can you give me a hypothetical, simple business plan that contains the elements of my business plan template? Here's the template with just a few instructions inside. Each section needs an example. So remember, be hyper-specific. So I took that business plan template, which is it still open? No, it's not still open, but I opened that up before and showed you. It just has a lot of spaces to fill things in. So I just highlighted the whole thing in Word, control C, copied it, went back over here, control V, pasted it. No worries about tables or anything like that. And it even has some things that you that ChatGPT would have to know to avoid uh, or ignore. Um, and there are questions for each one. Don't worry about spaces. It's no big deal. It'll figure it out. And I went down. This is all the stuff I just copied and pasted. And it answered, certainly, Sharon, based on the contents of the course book and the simple business plan template, here's a hypothetical simple business plan for a fictional local plumbing company called Pipeline Plumbing Services. The example, I don't I actually called it something else, I think, in the earlier fictitious example. So you'd have to make sure that worked. Example illustrates how each section might be filled in. So now I've got an example of the entire template including growth potential, a vision statement, mission. And this is a great way to customize your course or any of your courses to make sure it resonates with your target audience, giving them an example of something filled in. And it's a lot less time. Firstly, you have all the course materials from us, but then you can leverage ChatGPT to give you a filled in example. So long as you've been following through and you've given it the information it needs, you've given it the type of audience. And remember, if you stay in the same chat, it will remember what it's done before. But with this code interpreter, you can upload something. So you can go through and use that. And again, check it. You know, financial plan, it's kind of left it blank. I might have to, I'd ask it to go back and do that. I think ChatGPT is kind of notorious for not being very good at math. So maybe that's improved by now, but check your numbers. Uh, KPIs, I actually wasn't happy about the operations section. So here's this type of an example of making sure you follow up and get it to give more detail. It only gave product service creation. It could have been because I had all that space, those spaces when I pasted it in. Um, so you have to play with it. But I asked it for more. I said, here are, I, I said, um, can you provide more examples for the operations section for each part of operations? So it went in and did that as well. So that's really helpful. And that is where I finished, which is good because we are out of time. But I want to quickly show you the bonus. So remember first that you can get the course here, right? Contentsparks.com slash simple biz plan. And it's currently 67% off on launch. So you want to go ahead and grab that now. 
but also there's the bonus that's only available for the first few days and that is the challenge kit so this is something we do in a lot of the different courses and it is simply and it will open up let me close that we take what is a traditional opt-in report and we put it into a five-day challenge. So there's an introduction that you can use as a welcome. And then there's instructions as well. And then e we set it up as each email, which you want to customize, of course, to your voice. And that you can also use as the basis for a live stream. And if you want to edit it again to your audience, you can leverage chat GPT, give it the whole thing and ask it. But I like to do section by section. So you have that if you get the course in the next few days. And there are worksheets in there also. If I just show you the folder. See, there are daily worksheets here also. Just opening up one for each day for people to do their activities. So that is everything. Um, any questions at all? please let me know. I did say that I was going to do a hard end right now because I have another training that I have to get on. So I'm glad that you guys didn't have any as we went through. <laughs> but Joanne had one tip. I record to camera the learning objectives for each class and then switch to PowerPoint for the main part of the class. And that works well. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to recommend, or I do recommend. So definitely do that and try whatever tool works for you. I've started using Descript, which I love. So I'm glad that was helpful. Please do let me know if you have any questions. Drop them in the chat. Drop them. You can always send an email to support at contentsparks.com or reply to any of my emails. And either I'll see them or Fiona will reply. Um, if you have any other tips for using AI to customize or just doing any kind of customizing of your courses, share those too. And if for those of you who are already customers, share them in the customer group so that we can all network on that. But I have this, the community as well, where everyone can help out. So um, there's one last question I do see here. What chat to do you recommend? I recommend if you can do the $20 a month that you use ChatGPT Plus because I find that uses GPT-4 still. And the code interpreter I showed you where you can upload a document and ask it to look at it. And also some other plugins like Link Reader and you can get it to look at PDFs. So it just gives you better results in general. So I, I use that all the time. I've decided to start honing down what I use and really just focus on um, four tools max that are AI because there are just too many out there. And this one gives me the most flexibility. All right. And Barb, I'm sorry, you just made it. Business plans have been your thing. You'll love this because I really, the main thing I focused on here was using chat to, to to customize each part of the course and i did it in more unusual ways because there are new features like custom instructions and code interpreter and some other things that you can do and if you wanted to see the materials there's a, a, a video on the sales page so please do go ahead and grab that now while it's at the launch price because that's the best price we always do it's this is a really big course that's really worth a lot more than even the full price so it's a great deal and also there's that early bird bonus if you get it in the next few days so sorry i have to sign off now but like i said i will look out for any questions take care everybody talk to you soon